finally, to close out, i um, talking about sheer and moment, and I guess axial as well, in beams and frames. We're going to talk about the principle of superposition and how you can apply it to creating your shear and moment um, functions and your shear and moment diagrams. If you recall, the shear, the principle of superposition is your total displacement and internal loadings. such as axial load, shear, and moment from multiple external loads is equal to the sum of the displacement and internal loadings axial shear and moment resulting from the um, loads pl applied individually So if you have something that's got a couple different loadings on it, and maybe you know how to solve the ind individual loads, you can um, do that and then just add them together. So, um, just remember the limitations for superposition. You have to have small displacements so you don't have, have any P delta effects, extra moments due to excessive deformation, and a linear elastic material. back to my other um, file so that I have a nicer right, this with our frame now let's look at our superposition example so we have a beam subjected to three different loadings. It's got a horizontal or a linearly varying distributed load. Right. It's got a concentrated load and a moment. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. So if I want to know my shear and moment diagrams based off of this, um, I can separate those three loads. We solved these earlier. If I look at number one, I would if I draw the shear diagram for a um, triangular distributed load, it looks something like 
that. That crosses a little bit after halfway. All right, this is my shear associated with that one. Notice my change in shear from here to here, from this point to this point is equal to the applied load, which is 1 half W times L. All right, my moment diagram looks like peak is just slightly off center. It's wherever shear is equal to zero. All right, this value over here would be my reaction at A and negative reaction at B. So I have no moment at either support because I got a pin and a beam, or a pin and a column. It's a, oh my gosh, a pin and a roller. It's a simply supported beam. All right? Those are my reactions. Now I have um, my concentrated force, and I've got some kind of reaction at A and some kind of reaction at B. Reaction at A is probably bigger because it's closer to the applied load. So I'm going to estimate it right there. My reaction at B there. All right. This is my reaction at A, my reaction at B, negative reaction at B. This is the shear function for my applied concentrated load. And notice, right, this distance right here is negative P. So I'm going to have a peak right about there. It's a, my shear is constant, so I'm going to have a linear um, moment function with a peak where that constant load is. It's going to look something like that. This is my moment due to this second loading, right? This is number two. My next one, I have an applied concentrated moment at B. I need to have a vertical reaction up at B as a result, and a horizontal reaction down at A to have equilibrium in the Y direction. That leads to a constant shear. has a value of negative RB. So number three, this is my shear function for loading three. A constant shear function means I have a linearly varying um, moment function, which is going to be zero at A because that's a pin and there can't be any moment. And over here it's going to be equal to negative M. And 
it's going to be a straight line between the two. It's negative because I have a negative shear force, so my slope. my moment function for loading three. So let's say I solved these individual loadings. As long as these don't cause excessive deformations and um, they um, and it's a linear elastic material a linear elastic material, I can just add them together. So what I do is I'm like, let's look at the shear, right? This is going to be V1 plus V2 plus B3. So let's see, I've got my reaction at A plus my reaction at my reaction at A due to my loading one, my reaction at A due to loading two. And then I'm gonna subtract my reaction at B, right? Due to that moment. Let's say it ends up a positive number, right? Similarly, on the other side, I've got my negative reaction at B, my negative reaction at B due to loading two, and my negative reaction at, or my negative shear, sorry, negative shear at B, due to loading one, negative shear at B due to loading two, and negative shear at B due to loading three. Let's say this is somewhere still in here. Um, I have two peaks to work out. I've got and then I've got my discontinuity. So this is going to decrease in a little bit and increase it, still gonna have the same shape up until where that P is applied, right? It's gonna have that concave shape, then it's gonna decrease by P. And then it's gonna keep Looking like that. Right? This one, since the shear, since it's just adding and subtracting numbers, it's got the exact same shape as number one, right? It's got the same shape from here to here, and then I break it, and then I just move it down. Right, it's got the same shape as number one. The numbers are just slightly different and I've got that discontinuity at that applied concentrated load, right? <clears throat> For my moment, it's not going to be the same. I'm going to have zero at A because it's a roller or it's a pin and there's no applied moment. It would be at B, it would be zero, except I have an applied negative M right there, right? Or, <clears throat> excuse me, an applied concentrated moment. 
Um, my peak would have happened at 0.577, just after halfway from my triangular load. And then it's shifted a little bit from there. So we're probably looking at something that kind of looks like that. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> all right. This is all kind of just qualitative. Okay, so that is how you can use superposition to develop um, shear moment diagrams um, with a beam or frame subjected to multiple loadings. You can solve them individually and then add them together. And that is the end of forces in statically determinate beams and frames. Thanks.